So it's really great to be here tonight, actually. It's, it's wonderful to have a chance to listen to new ideas and good ideas. Um, I think it's obvious to most of us, if not all of us in this room, that if we are to actually be fit for purpose, if we are to, to develop the sector we work in, and I come solidly from inside the sector. I spent my whole professional life working, working in the humanitarian sector. Then we need to have some kind of a more network-centric you know, approach to things. And, and it's clear from the first video we saw to the presentation we hear, we need to engage, we need to build partnerships, and we need to find new ways of collaborating. And at, at one side, on one side, it's great to be here. On the other hand, I live in Geneva, right? which is uh, very much sort of the, the, the epicenter of the echo chamber, if you want. Uh, and I must say, following the discussions on the World Humanitarian Summit that we'll have in a couple of weeks, and the grand bargain and all of that, it doesn't give me quite as much hope um, for us being able to change the way we want to, or the, to implement some of the ideas we hear here tonight. Um, I recently started tweeting, and uh, I followed, uh, I began following a guy called, I don't know who this is, he calls himself Evil Genius. I hope some of you follow him. And one of the tweets he sent out that I sometimes think about when I'm having a bad day in Geneva is, the aid system isn't broken, he wrote. It is rather highly adapted to resist change. <laughs> right? Now, it's a bit of a provocative statement, obviously, and he's very funny. You should, you should follow him, actually. Um, but it's worth thinking about. How committed are we actually to changing? How committed are we to, um, to really engaging and, and, and creating that network-based approach that we need? And where is that discussion? Sort of a, a monolithic core humanitarian uh, actors versus a more network-centric. Where is that discussion really? in the World Humanitarian Summit? Where, where do we discuss that architecture that we, we struggle with? Um, and what I would like to, to bring to the table, the pitch I would like to make tonight, is around what I believe is one piece to, to cracking that challenge and moving us forward. I think the challenge we have is not so much finding the solution as it is creating the environment from where the solution can emerge. I think, I think we are very often focused on specific solutions, but really, what we should be focusing on is our capability to change to adapt. And the simple solution that I would like to present to you that I think can help us do that is what we call H2H, -H, humanitarian to humanitarian. Simply B2B for the humanitarian sector. Right? If, if you want to think about an example of that, you just saw one. Sarah works with CALP. And if you follow the CAS discussion and you see how that amazing team has energized the discussion, within CAS you have one example of what an H2H -H organization can do. So H2H -H is, is essentially a humanitarian actor who is based on the humanitarian principles, often staffed with people who come from inside the sector, but who deliver services to the sector rather than to the people affected by disaster. Either by being a, a platform, convening, organizations bringing them together, achieving change that way, by providing services, often information services, by working with standards, by working with logistics. We have one called the, the Fuel Alliance, which essentially specializes in getting a very good deal on fuel, a critical commodity in the first months after a sudden onset disaster, at a good price, in that way enabling a better response. For those of you who have worked in earthquakes, for example, think about the power of map action. A small UK, um, UK charity who delivers killer maps, the map that actually helps you understand how to make sense out of this chaos. Right? That's H2H. To H. There are about maybe 70, 80 or more of these small initiatives. And the good news is that they already exist. We already have a lot of the capabilities in the sector. But we haven't connected the dots. We haven't thought of it as a community, as, a, as an entity, as an ecosystem, if you want. And so my call is that we need to excavate this ecosystem that already is, exists around us. Think about this. If we have 70 to 80 of them, probably the, the investment into these entities is, is uh, maybe $150, $200 million a year. Yet, as a sector, that doesn't any, figure anywhere as, as part of our strategy. 
how, how, what, where does that fit into the transformative agenda and the clusters and, and the way we try to, to make our sector better? It doesn't. It's invisible. Yet when you start thinking about the, 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 the catalytic uh, or uh, the catalyst power that these small initiatives actually have, you see that we should be thinking about how can they together help us not make the evil genius tweet V2. And that's, again, it's not about finding the solution, it's about creating that environment, that soft zone, which on one side enables us to be true to our humanitarian principles and, and the way we work in the sector, while at the same time engaging and evolving and changing the way we do business. Right? So it's, it's quite a simple pitch, actually. It's just about thinking about this community that we already have among us and using them more strategically. How do we do that? Well, this is where money comes into the picture, obviously. And I think what we need is, is some kind of platform where we, on one side, from the H2H -H entities, so I can pr propose the, um, the services that we think are needed in a, in a given situation. Think about INSO, who delivers security services in many contexts, critical service for us. Uh, ACAPs that I work for do assessments. Right? What, what do you actually need in a, in a given situation? And are you, as operational agencies, as NGOs, willing to actually pay for those services? Now, are you willing to take part of your operational budget and say, we want to spend 10 million or 5 million, whatever it takes, to get these critical services to create an enabling environment for, um, for response and coordination? That, that's the key question. And I think the advantage, I, the thing that concerns me a lot is, is I think we have a very broken business model in, in, in the sector. I think, I think we don't have the right incentive structure. And one of the things we need to make sure if, if we want to more, work more systematically with h 2 h is that we get the incentive structure right. And that means that if you, you deliver services that are not required, you don't get any money. So that we ensure that the, the, the ecosystem evolves and changes as crises change. You know, if, if you think about what we have had to deal with over the past couple of years, think about Syria, Ebola, the European migrant crisis, the, how dynamic these new types of crises are, the interconnectedness, the feedback mechanism, it's obvious we need a new toolbox. We need a broader toolbox. Right? I think H2H can help us develop that. But it does require that the, the mainstream humanitarian actors are willing <coughs> to go in put part of their funding into a pot and say, we want to have top quality services in this operation. We want, um, it's almost like having a humanitarian skunk works, you know? The place where you go to develop the new state of the art um, products that, that you need to, to operate or to, to evolve with, with the situation. Um, and if we create such an incentive structure where it's, it's based on actually being wanted by your clients, if you want, then we will also make sure that, that we change, that we don't grow fat, that we don't just sit in Geneva or wherever we're sitting and, and delivering information services that nobody really uses, but that we actually keep on pushing ourselves to, to, to evolve and, and do better. So that's very simply the pitch. Let's think about H2H -H as one way, as one strategy to help the sector evolve, you have to pay for it. Right? But if you do that, I believe it can be a critical way to push us to meet the challenges of, of today. Thank you.